Hello everybody and welcome, this is Roland from Graphic in Motion. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to customize my latest template, it's called the 3D Logo Box Intro. And I will just show you a quick RAM preview before we start customizing it. Here we go. It's kind of this 3D box falling into the screen and then revealing a 3D glossy shiny logo which explodes in the end. And everything is done in After Effects so we have no 3D pre-rendered elements or whatever. So let's get started with the customization. At first we will import our logo so we will move to the Your Logo composition. It should already be open in the timeline, but you can also find it up here in the project area. So we will go to File and Import File. And for this customization, I will take my Graphic in Motion logo and just drag it on top of my placeholder here. And now I will scale it a little bit up. Oops, sorry. It is important that when you are positioning your logo that it stays within the inner lines of the title safe area. So you can see this square here and the logo should not exceed these lines because otherwise it would stick out of the box afterwards in the final render. So please be a little bit careful and if you don't see it then turn on the title action save button here and just position your logo in the middle and take a look that it doesn't cross these lines, the inner lines. Okay, the next thing that we want to do in this composition is that we take a color from our logo and you see that here I can take this color picker from the tint effect and just take a color from my logo. And I will show you what this does. This is, we have to move to frame where we can see the box, this line here. This is just a little element to, to get some kind of connection or some color connection between the box and your logo. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to enter our box text and logo. You can see that uh, on the box there is a logo and uh, some kind of text, so we have to edit this. Therefore, we move to the box text logo composition. And here we just have one text layer and a logo layer. So again, I will drop in my logo here. And this time I will scale it down that it has approximately the size of the placeholder. And I will just move it to the left. And can I scale it up a little bit again? Like this. And now I can edit my text. Let's say we type in the title. And here we will type not coming soon, but out now. Okay, um, we only have to change one little thing here. You see that this text here crosses the title safe action area line and I don't want this to happen. So I will just uh, scale it a little bit down or decrease the size of the font in this case. Like this, okay. And now I can disable my placeholder, the Envato logo, and I can go to my animation composition and check the outcome. You see now I have my logo and the updated text here. Okay, the next thing we can do is to stylize the whole look of the animation. And therefore we move to the animation composition and you will see that there is a style control layer and this is a very important layer to get the real look. What you can do here is you can change the light colors. If you take a closer look you can press this hide all layers button to unhide all layers. 
we have about five lights in this composition which light the scene from every direction and every light is set to a special color so the front the back and front two are set to the same color and the left and the right light are set to specific colors and these colors you can control with this style control panel so let's say you want to change it to a warmer look and the front light should be something like a, a yellow light so we will take a really only slight yellow and now you see that it already changes the whole look and this is because everything is connected together so the front light is connected also to the color of the background you know and so you can change the complete look and the complete feel of this animation now let's change the left light let's say we do not want this to be blue but we want this to be some kind of a red so we move to red here press OK and the right light what could we do here we could maybe take some slight green or something like this or I don't know it's not going to be a really cool style here but I just try to show you what you can do I, I didn't think much about this style now oh, let's say we let's take this color like a slightly yellow and what you also realize is that the color of the flares uh, changes with the color of the lights. So these are also connected together. The next slider controls the brightness or the darkness of the background. You see that it is now set to 40, minus 45. So uh, the background is a little bit darker. But I think that in this case, my background is still a little bit too bright. So I will set this to, let's say, minus 70. And let's see what this does. It's maybe a little bit too much. But let's set it to minus 50 so that we get a little bit of a contrast between the box and the background. And you can do the same with the color of the floor. So you can set it to minus uh, 40 or whatever if you want to have the floor a little bit darker. But you can, of course, also increase the brightness if you need to do so. So the range of these sliders is from minus 100 to 100. So this is the normal range of a brightness uh, slider. But I will take just the minus 45, which I had before. And minus 40 on the floor is quite cool. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to show you is how you can change the extrusion depth of the logo. So this is a good framework. We can see it. You know, you see that the logo is extruded over a certain depth here. And you can change this just by uh, selecting this 3D logo layer here. I will just unhide all the unnecessary layers again. And now you can go into the effect controls panel and you have to enter the shadow effect. And here you can change the extrusion depth, which is this slider here. And if you type in 3 here, you see that the extrusion increases. Or you can also make it really slim. Whatever you want. I set the value to 1 as a default. So I would say that for my logo, because it's a very thin one, it would be better to increase it a little bit. Oh, that's too much let's say three yeah that's cool okay this is more or less it now you could move on to the render composition and you see in the render composition we have another color correction layer so you can change the overall look i just put a curves effect on it here so if you want to to increase the contrast or just take out a little bit of the the brightness it gives it gives it this a little bit milky shine here you can do it with this curves correction and then you can just put in your audio i used the fast and epic orchestral logo sound for this audio the link is in the items description and also in the download folder and if you want to use this music too you can just import it into your scene or your project and then just drag it and, um, and just drag it into the render composition and just make sure that the the audio file starts with frame zero here. 
and now you can just render out the animation. One more hint concerning the render times. If you take a look at the style, you can see that you know we have uh, some motion blur going on. We have uh, five lights in the scene which also cast shadows. And this can be a little bit hard and can create some longer render times. So if you say, I don't have time at all and I don't, I don't uh, need to have the perfect look, I just need to render out a quick intro, then I will show you what you can change to improve the render times. Therefore, we move to our animation composition and press the hide all layers switch again to reveal all the layers. And then we select all lights by just clicking on the first of them and holding down shift and clicking the last. And now you press AA on the keyboard to reveal all the options of the lights. And here you can see that I set the shadow diffusion to 100 pixels. And this is a value that just uh, makes it possible to have these really soft, nice shadows in After Effects. But this is also what causes a really long render time. So if it's really important for you to just get a very fast render or way faster render, then just set this value to zero. And you will see that now you have these hard lines. These shadows have now just a hard line. And now the render will be definitely a lot faster than with diffused shadows. Of course, you can uh, set the value. Let's select all the lights again. You can set the value to a lower number. You can say, OK, we just do 25, you know. So we have still, we will still have this a little bit uh, blurred out or diffused shadows, and it still will render way quicker than if they're set to 100. So I will just make some more render tests and then I will see which number I will put in as a default in the final downloadable project. I set it to 100 now for my test renders and maybe I will decrease it a little bit so that from the beginning we have a, a value of 25 or 15 here. But now you are prepared and you know how to change this value. Okay, so this is it for now. I hope that you like the animation and I'm looking forward to see some nice adaptions and customizations that you will make. Have fun with the template and I hope to see you soon. Bye.